Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to see how to create a voracious void in Roll20, which comes to us from Steinhardt's Guide to the Eldritch Hunt. A voracious void is a class feature for warlocks with the Void Patron, which allows them to summon a black hole onto the battlefield, and this black hole increases in size and damage output as the warlock gains levels. So today, we're going to write some script cards that automatically handle those size and damage increases. And, because we're using mods, a pro account will be required to do what I'm about to show you. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is install the script card mods into our game. So just come out to the mod library here, and in the drop-down box here, search for script cards, and that'll give you this mod right here, which comes to us from the amazing Kurt Jagers. Kurt, thank you so much for everything you do for the community. This mod is incredibly powerful, and I'm always finding new and exciting things that it's capable of. So once we've got script cards loaded, we'll jump back into our game. And you can see I've already got a token and character sheet set up for my Warlock, but what I want to do is have my Warlock drag the Voracious Void out onto the battlefield whenever they need it. And to do that, we're going to create a character sheet just for the Voracious Void. So we're just going to create a character sheet here, we're going to call it Void. I'm going to give control of this to my player, whose name is Daisy, and then I'm going to save changes here. And that gives me the blank void character sheet and when Roll20 asks you if you want to edit it directly or use a character mancer this really doesn't matter we can say just edit the sheet directly okay fantastic so we've got the void character sheet but now we need a token for the void so to create that I'm going to go out to this website, Token Stamp 2. I'll put a link down in the video description. And we're going to create a very simple black hole token. And the way we're going to do that is by clicking on background color here, setting that to black. I'm going to give this a slightly cooler border like this. And that is it. This is our black hole token right here. I can now say download. That's going to save that token to my computer. And now I can jump back into my game, and I'm just going to drag that black hole token out into my game. And there it is. All right, so I'm going to resize this token down to the correct dimensions. And in the beginning, the black hole token is 5 feet in diameter. And it also has what's called a 5-foot domain of influence, which is basically an area around the black hole that the black hole's effects can impact. So to indicate that, we're going to go into the token settings, and we're going to make token aura 1 visible to all players. We're going to set it to be 5 feet, and let's give it a color. I'm going to say it's this kind of purple color here, and then save settings. So now we can see the black hole itself. We can see the area around it that it influences. And the last thing that we want to do is assign this token to the Void's character sheet. So we can do that just by going back into the token settings here. We're going to say that it represents character void, which is right there. And then we're going to say update default token. And that will make the token that we have selected the default token for the character sheet. And we can confirm that just by going back into the character sheet here, saying edit, and there's our black hole token. Okay, so now if I minimize the sheet and delete this token that we just created, I'm going to drag out a fresh one, and there we go. We see that it is sized properly, and it has the aura around it. Okay, cool. So if we pull up the PDF of Steinhardt's Guide to the Eldritch Hunt, we can see that creatures that enter the black hole space for the first time or start their turn there take 1d6 magical bludgeoning damage and their speed is halved. But then later on at level 9, that damage increases to 2d6. So let's start out by writing a script card that checks to see what level our warlock is and then rolls 1 or 2d6 accordingly. So I'll start out by showing you what it's going to look like when it's done. So here we go, we're going to have this little script card pop up here with the title Crushing Damage, and it displays how many points of bludgeoning damage were dealt, and if I hover over this, I can see that we rolled 2d6 with a 2 and a 4, and that's because Agathon, my Warlock, is actually level 9. So that is calculating correctly, it's rolling 2d6. Okay, but how does this actually work? Well, let's pull up our trusty Notepad++ window here, and let's write some code. So to start with, we're going to say exclamation point script, and two open curly braces, and two closing curly braces. And everything between those two sets of curly braces is part of this script card. 
All right, so the first thing we want to do is put the title of the script card in there, which again is crushing damage. So I'm going to put in this line, dash dash title, crushing damage. Easy enough. Then what we want to do is retrieve Agathon's level. We need to know what level he is in order to determine how much damage the black hole is dealing. And so for that, we're going to put in a line that looks like this. And basically what we're saying here is we are fetching Agathon's base level and we're storing that in a variable called char level. Now, the next thing we want to do is check to see if his level is nine or greater. And if it is, we roll 2d6. If it's less than nine, we roll 1d6. And we do that with a line that looks like this. This dash dash question mark is a conditional, basically an if statement, saying that if character level is less than nine, then the damage that we're rolling is equal to 1d6. Otherwise, the damage that we're rolling is equal to 2d6. And then finally, we want to display that damage to the user. And to do that, we're going to use a line like this. Dash dash plus means that we are writing output into chat. And damage right here is the label that you see over here in the script card. And then here is the damage that we actually rolled. So that's our 2d6. And then the text points of bludgeoning damage, which is what you see over here. And that's it. That's all we need in order to do this. So now what we can do is take this code, copy it, and then go into our void character sheet. Go over to attributes and abilities, add, and we're going to call this ability crushing damage. And we'll paste in our script card here, save this, show it as a token action. And now our player has that button right here to roll crushing damage whenever they need to. So we just click crushing damage and there we go. We've just rolled that again. Now, the next thing we want to do is automatically handle resizing the black hole and its domain of influence based on Agathon's level. And essentially what I want to have happen is when I drag the black hole out onto the battlefield, it automatically gets resized. And we're going to do that using a feature called script card triggers, which allows script cards to automatically react when a certain event occurs in your Roll20 game. And in this case, it's going to be when that black hole graphic gets added onto the battlefield, script cards will automatically kick in and perform the resizing. So let's see how to do that. Well, the prerequisite step is that we need to create a character in our game called script cards underscore triggers and the name has to be exactly like this it is case sensitive you cannot change it it has to look exactly like this script cards triggers let's go ahead we'll click save changes on this and now we're just going to tuck this away for the moment we're going to come back to this in a few minutes all right so bringing back our trusty notepad plus plus window here and again we're doing script with the open curly braces and the closing curly braces and the first two lines we're going to add to this script card are going to look like this so let's talk about what these mean under the hood when a new graphic gets added to the battlefield an event fires behind the scenes in roll 20 called add graphic and so what this script card trigger replacements is going to do is when that add graphic event fires, it's going to grab the ID of the graphic that was just added and assign that ID to this variable right here, graphic added. And now we can use that newly added graphic ID to refer to that specific token that was just put on the battlefield. And so what's actually happening right here is we're grabbing the token ID and then we're looking up the T name property, that is the token name property for that token, and we're assigning it to a variable called name. So now that we know the name of the token, we want to check and see if it's our void token. And the way we're going to do that is with a couple of lines that look like this. So we're going to say if name equals void, then we're going to call another routine called determine void size, which we'll write in just a minute. And then once we're done with that, we're going to exit out of the script card. But one thing I want to point out here is that it's important you enclose the name variable in quotes like this when you're doing string comparisons, because if there are spaces inside the, the bit of text that you're looking for, or if there could be spaces, then things will fail if you don't enclose them 
in quotes. So just one quick little safety tip there. So if our token's name equals void, then we're gonna figure out how big the void should be. Otherwise, we just exit out of the card. So if we drag a different character onto the battlefield, or if we just drag an image of, say, a barrel or something like that that doesn't represent a character, we're just going to skip over it and exit out completely. All right, so the next thing we want to do is determine how big the void should be. So I'm going to put in another little chunk of code here, and I'll explain it line by line. So determine void size is the name of the routine. So if our character's name equals void, we're calling determine void size. So we're going to jump down here to this marker. And then what we're doing is we're figuring out Agathon's level and assigning it to a variable called character level, just like we did with the other script card. And then we've got some logic here that's checking to see what level he is. So if his level is greater than or equal to five, we're going to call another routine called level five. If it's greater than or equal to seven, we're going to call level seven greater than or equal to nine. We're going to call level nine. And these call them level-based routines, will correspond to the changes that occur as the warlock scales in level. So right here, fifth level in the class, the domain of influence of the sphere increases to 10 feet. So our level five routine is going to handle that. So we're going to put in code that looks like this, where we say level five means that we're going to take that graphic that we just added, and we're going to set its aura one radius to 10 and then at level 7 the diameter of the black hole increases to 10 feet so the token actually gets bigger it's not going to be a one by one token anymore it's going to be a two by two token and so that's going to look like this so our level 7 here is going to say that we're going to take the graphic that was just added and we're going to set its height and width properties to 140. And just so you folks know, a single square on a Roll20 battle map is 70 by 70 pixels. So if we're going to have it be two squares wide and two squares tall, that is 10 feet, then it's going to be 140 by 140 pixels. Quick disclaimer, this is just for battle maps that use a five foot square. If you are using a different scale than that, you can do the math to figure it out how big this should be. But all my battle maps are scaled for five feet, so I'm going with 140 by 140. And then finally, at ninth level, the sphere's domain of influence, that is its aura, increases to 20 feet so we're going to put in our level 9 routine which is going to look like this and says that we're going to set the graphics aura out to 20 feet all right so just to kind of run through the flow end to end here we add the token to the battle map we check its name to see if it is the void token if it is we jump in to determine void size we grab our character's level and then we check to see if their character level is greater than or equal to 5. If it is, we jump down to level 5. We set its aura radius to 10, and then this line tells script cards to return to where you were previously, that is, we're going to jump back to this next line here, and continue running. So then we're going to check to see if our level is greater than or equal to level 7. We're going to jump down here, set our height and width properties, and then return again, which means we check to see if we are greater than or equal to level 9. If we are, we drop down here, we set our radius to 20, and then return. So we're back here, we return again. So we return from level 9 to determine void size. From determine void size, we return back to the main body of the card here, and then the next line exits. So we complete card execution, and then we continue on with life. But now at this point, you may be wondering, where does this code live? Where, where do we actually place this? All right, well, this code is going to live inside that newly created script cards character sheet that we created a second ago. So I'm going to go back into the attributes and abilities section here. I'm going to add a new ability, and we're going to name the ability add colon graphic. This is the event that we talked about in Roll20. When a graphic gets added to the battlefield, the add graphic event fires. And so what's going to happen is that event fires, script cards picks up on it, it looks at the script card triggers character sheet to see is there any code associated with add graphic. And as a matter of fact, there is. There's this stuff right here. So we're going to save that. We don't need to make it a token action or anything like that. Now we can minimize the script cards triggers here. And let's delete the black hole off the battlefield. And I'm also going to jump back to my game's mod page real fast and just restart my API sandbox. This is a good thing to do just so that everything picks up on the changes that you've made. 
So let's go back to our game. And now when we drag our void in, you can see that it automatically resized the token and the aura. But now if I do that again, we drag it on, there we go. We see the token resizes both in its own dimensions and its aura dimensions. But you probably notice that there's a little pop-up that's happened here where we have this empty script cards going on. And that's what happens when a script card gets created, but there's no title associated with it. And in fact, there's no content. And we really don't want this. We want to suppress this from being displayed in chat because it's not actually doing anything. So we can suppress that message by coming into our script card again and just adding one more line. We're going to say dash dash hide card. And we're going to set that to one, which tells script cards to suppress this card's output. So now if we copy this whole thing again, go back into script cards triggers, I'm just gonna delete and replace everything that we had in the add graphics section there. I'm gonna restart my API sandbox again, just to be safe. And now let's clear our chat so that we don't have any messages. We'll delete our token off the battlefield here. And one more time, dragging out the void we resize and nothing is displayed in chat. Now, of course, we could modify the code. We could have some text get displayed inside of determined void size that says something like Agathon summons a void or whatever, but I'm good with the way it is for right now. One final thing to mention here is there are a ton of different triggers available to you in script cards. And so this page, which I'll put a link to down in the video description, is all of the script card documentation and walks you through all of the capabilities it provides. So you can look through here, see all the different things you could create triggers for. And if you see things that sound good, you can incorporate them into your game. So there you have it, how to create a voracious void that scales in size and damage as your character levels. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.